Okay, pre -algebras. It's very early in the morning, on Friday morning, and I'm going to try and get this done without being attacked by cats too much. It's not going to take long. What we're going to do is talk real quick about all the solids you need to know. Now, these are the ones you actually need to know over here. Well, let me switch my... We'll use a lightsaber. So, there we go. These are all... Have I ever used a lightsaber before? I don't think I have. These are all the ones we need to know. The ones that we'll need to work with. Uh, although I forgot one. The triangular prism's not here. We'll go over that. These just are cool pictures I found online. The sphere I thought was really neat. And then this torus thing. Very interesting. Anyway, without geometry, life is definitely pointless. Which is really punny. Alright, so what we're going to do is look at the um, structure of the different solids we need to know and do a quick drawing for each one on isometric dot paper. Um, if you're like me and you are not much of an artist, iso dot paper is actually really easy to use. You'll like it. Um, it's really easy to make the, the figure actually look like what it's supposed to look like. So, the solids we're going to study. A polygon, remember, is a closed plane figure, and plane means flat with flat sides. So a polygon is closed. A polyhedron, <laughs> that noise is, is kind of annoying, but that's okay, is a solid figure whose faces are all polygons. So a polyhedron. We name a prism or a pyramid, excuse me, by the shape of its base. And we're going to look at rectangular prism, triangular prism, cylinder cone, and pyramid. Rectangular prism, like a box. Um, in um, I, the pictures that you see, the purple ones, came from the website Maths is Fun. It's Maths with an S is Fun. And it's, um, that is uh, a British website. <clears throat> and so apparently they call rectangular prism a cuboid. See this right here? Cuboid. Uh, or a cube. So we're going to look at rectangular prism and cube. I'm going to um, use my isodot paper. So what you're going to do with the isodot paper is whatever you want the top of the prism to be, you're going to draw and use it diagonally. And you make that shape basically a diamond. So that's the top of our prism. Let's make this one actually the cube. And then you bring your sides straight down using the dots. And there you go. Now that's two dimension or not two dimensional but not see through it's um opaque i think is the word i was looking for excuse me Ooh, told you it was early <laughs> um so you could put those little nice little dashed lines behind it if you want but we're just going to draw them um simply here uh well i guess maybe i'll include them anyway so that broken 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 so these are the back edges of the cube okay um i don't like that as much as i do the rectangular prism Rectangular prism. Let's start off with, um, let's see, let's see. I whoop, I have a cat right up in my face. Um, let's see. Let me think about this real quick. Here we go. So this is what I decided to do. I'm gonna make a nice big prism. We're gonna start with um, the top of the prism is gonna be kind of a rectangular shape because again, rectangular prism, and the bases are generally considered the top and the bottom. Okay, bring the sides straight down, and everything's parallel. You see how all of those lines, every line is parallel to something. So like the, the edge that's the, the, uh, on the same face. So these are parallel, this one right here and this one right here, or this one right here. And okay, I've had enough of the lightsaber. Sorry guys, couldn't handle it. Oh, I didn't switch. <laughs> oh. I can pick the color of the lights. Oh, that's just fun. All right, well, I'm going to use a blue arrow at this point because I can't listen to the lightsaber noise anymore. These lines are all parallel, all these edges that are parallel. Let's put our um, broken, 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 broken. They're back edges. So what do we know about <coughs> the rectangular prism? Well, it has six faces. Think about um, a die that you use when you're playing a game. Vertices, corners. Well, let's look here. It's got four around the top, four around the bottom, so a total of eight. Okay. Vertices, remember vertexes. Vertex, singular, vertices, plural. Edges. 
Well, for edges, we got four around the top, four around the bottom, and four around the sides. So you actually have 12 edges. There's a cool relationship here with the faces, vertices, edges. You actually, um, with the different solids that we'll talk about also in class, the platonic solids um, that you can build, you, um, you have a little formula, faces plus vertices minus 2 equals edges. And there's 14 minus 2 definitely equals 12. So that's just kind of a cool thing with a rectangular prism. Now, triangular prism. So triangular prism, instead of the base being a rectangle, the base is a triangle. So there's a couple different ways to draw these. They basically look like um, blocks of cheese. So I want to make my, my base a triangle. So you can make your, your um, the top part. You, want your, you still want to have, like... Um, you still you still want to be able to use the lines straight down, so you make the top a triangle. So basically, draw any triangle. Drop the sides straight down. Oop, that one's a little messy. Uh oh, there we go. Drop the sides straight down. There we go. Making sure that they're the same length. So what I did is I counted one, two, three, four dots. One, two, three, four dots. Same thing. Four dots. Complete it and you have your triangular prism. Now there's no back edges on that one for me to show because there's no other edges other than the ones you see. Excuse me, again, told you it was early. Now, if you want, you could put little holes all over. It looks like a little piece of Swiss cheese. No, I'm just kidding. Let's not put those on there. Let's, let's get rid of that. All right, faces, edges, vertices. What do we got? We got not quite um, going to be the same thing because it's not platonic, so you're not going to be able to use that formula, but I want you thinking about faces, edges, and vertices. So this actually has how many faces? Well, it's got this one facing us, this one here. These are bases, the one on the bottom. Oh, wait, I can do one. I forgot. I can do one edge. There we go. There's my 3D nature now. All right. So how many faces? One, two, three three, four, and then this one on the back, five. So all the bases are definitely um, bases. We can also, they're also faces. Uh, vertices, corners, count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, which makes sense. On the other one it was eight because the bases were rectangles. So you got four corners of a triangle. Well, the bases here are triangles. So you got three corners and you got two of them. So there you go. Edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So guys, this should all make total sense. And actually, look at that, it did work again. Five plus six is 11, minus nine is two. So it did work again. I thought it only worked for the platonic solids, but I guess that was wrong. All right, so that takes care of our prisms. On to the pyramid, the pyramid. The base is usually gonna be a square for a pyramid. We name our pyramids and our bases, our pyramids and our prisms based on the shape of the base, like we saw before. You're really only going to have square pyramid, but triangular pyramid, excuse me, oh, sleepy. Um, triangular pyramid is something we should still understand and, and recognize. So we're going to be looking at square pyramid. So to draw a square pyramid, you're actually going to start by drawing, the, the base of the square pyramid is actually going to be a, um, 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 a parallelogram. It's going to look like a parallelogram. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw the, um, sorry, editing jump. I also have a very mouthy feline that keeps trying to get um, up in my face here. So for the pyramid, you see how this square, how these sides are actually horizontal to you? That's what we're going to start with. Um, there's a very mouthy feline here in the living room that does not want to leave me alone, just so you understand. If you start hearing the noisemaker, she's scratching at the front door right now, actually. You're going to go up the side, you're going to make it match on the other side, and in the back with an invisible line. That's the base of the pyramid. It's sitting flat in front of you. You're going to choose a point straight above everything to be the point of the pyramid and drop the edges straight down. You can see the three front edges, but you can't see that one. Pyramid! Pretty nice, isn't it? I'm not going to draw a triangular pyramid. Um, I'm just not as good at that, but you guys can go for it on your own. You got your extra space probably on your isodot paper. And you can always use the PDF that I put up as well. Pyramid, um, the faces that come to a point all the way around the sides are all triangles. 
and then your base is the square. Cylinder. All right now we get to the ones with the circles. Cylinder has two bases, both circles. Um, <coughs> can be right or oblique. This is kind of cool. Uh, we don't really study oblique cylinders, but it's kind of a cool thing to draw, something to think about. All right, for the cylinder, here's what you're going to do. You're going to, I know, Pinky. Everybody can hear you, Pinky. I think you guys can hear it. I don't know. You have to tell me later. What you're going to do is actually draw an oval for the top of the cylinder. So you're going to choose two points that are horizontal to each other, across from each other. And you're going to use these other points to draw a curved line this way and a curved line that way. Drop the edge straight down, drop the edge straight down, make this match here, but the back edge is invisible. There's your cylinder. Now an oblique cylinder, I didn't leave myself a lot of room, but I'll just make it nice and small. An oblique cylinder, you draw your top, you draw your bottom, but um, off to the side. So we'll just do a little short one like this. Isn't that kind of cool looking? So it's like you have a slinky, but you've pushed it off to one side. So an oblique cylinder still has the same volume as a, as a right cylinder. Right meaning like this is a right angle. Right angle. But um, it's just kind of slanty. Kind of an interesting concept. All right. After your cylinder, you have cone. All right. And this is our last one. Cone's really easy. I bet you can already figure out how to draw it. I chose this particular um, image of a cone because it was one of the first things that came up when I Im Google imaged. Remember, it's got one circular base. How cute. I love Toy Story. I think they're making a fourth movie, by the way. For cone, you're going to make the base just like you made for the cylinder. You're going to choose a point straight above, and you're going to drop the two sides. And that's it. That's the cone. Let's do a little skinny one. A little tall skinny one. And let's put it right there. Alright. And that could be a dunce cap or a witch's hat or whatever. Um, let's see. I can draw that real quick. Let's see. Okay. Oh, he doesn't have any ears. Oh, there we go. Never tell me I'm not an artist. But anyway, that, that that's it. That's it. So hopefully you had kind of fun drawing your ISO dot pictures. Use that PDF. Um, you can draw all kinds of fun things. We'll be doing some stuff with these, including surface area and volume next week. So lots of cool things we can do with that. Um, and uh, have a great weekend, guys. I'll see you in class.